Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. The Select Points tool allows us to select points or objects on our canvas, which can be used then later with other tools. So if we go over here to the draw section and click on select points or G for the shortcut, we can click and drag to create a box that will select any points within it. We can do this for all points or just certain points that we want to select. Also, if we select a group and then hold and shift and select another group, we can select multiple groups at once. Lasso mode allows us to do a freehand selection, so we can just draw wherever we want to select the points that we want, which is very useful. The transform points tool allows us to affect the selected points on the canvas. If we take the transform points tool, you can see that some boxes appear around the selected points. For this demonstration, let's highlight the entire object. That way we can alter all the object's points, essentially altering the object. So if we place our cursor inside the box and click and drag, we can move the points around. The same goes if we put it on the outside of the boxes. If we place the cursor inside the outlines and move, we can then rotate. Holding in shift, we'll do it at 45 degree increments. The nine points on the first outline allow us to resize. So proportionately, we can resize then vertically, and we can do it horizontally. Holding in alt will allow you to create a squish effect when you're doing this as well. Now at the top, you can adjust all of these values numerically if you wish, position, scale, and rotation. Additionally, Holding in control on Windows or Command on Mac and dragging allows you to select points, just like the Select Points tool. So basically everything is now built into the Transform Points tool if you wish to alter your points in these ways. The Add Point tool allows us to draw objects out while adding points down. So if we select it and you can see at the top that we have auto weld, auto fill, and sharp corners. If we have auto weld and auto fill turn on, whenever we create an object here, it will automatically fill in. So if we start here, we just place points down by clicking and dragging and going from one point to the next. When we create the shape by welding the points shut, you can see it takes the style palette properties and fills it in. Now, if we do sharp corners, this will create jagged edges or sharp corners between each point. It won't do that nice, soft, or rounded look. And this can be useful for, let's say, creating buildings. And you can also add points at any time after you put points down. So if you want to add more points to an object, all you have to do is click in between your points in order to do it. The Curvature tool allows us to take lines or points and round them out or straighten them out. So as you can see, we're working with one point here. If we click on it and we move to the left, it will straighten it out. Moving to the right will round it out. So we can do that with the nose or any point that we see fit. So as an example here, if we take the Select Points tool and we highlight all the points on the object, come over here to the curvature tool and we move back and forth you can see that we are altering the points so that they either go straight or we can round them out so that can be very useful if you want to do a lot of points quickly now as another example we have like a rectangle shape here on screen take the curvature tool and at the top you can either do smooth or peak smooth will smooth out or round out the lines completely and peak will make them completely jagged. So you have some shortcuts there when it comes to using the curvature tool. The freehand tool gives us more freedom than that of the add point tool. It basically acts like a pen or pencil where you can draw wherever you want and then you can worry about the control points later on if you want to.
So you can do auto weld, auto fill, or auto stroke. So you can automatically have it fill in with your stroke or fill properties. Auto weld will help you snap the object closed, as you can see just how we did it right there. So those are some things you can work with when you are drawing with the freehand tool. And you'll see here as we draw out a line here and we release, there are points. So you could alter those points then with the transform points tool if you wish. As an example, we can come over here to our stroke properties and let's put the stroke to black and width to three and then we can draw out an ear. And we can do some adjustments here as well inside the ear. Now you'll notice that there is a taper effect. You can change this in the freehand options. You can also use pen pressure if you're using a tablet or random line width if you want a more stylized look with your mouse drawings. Additionally, when it comes to using the freehand tool, you have another option that will allow you to easily close shapes in, and it's called auto close. So let's say, for instance, that you draw out a shape, and this is more of a drastic example. You get to this point and you don't go any further. Well, if you re-release, you'll see that those two points connect together. We can do it again here. The two closest points connect. And you'll also notice too that when you do freehand drawings, you do get a lot of points. So be sure you keep that in mind as you may want to reduce these later on as it can make animation easier. The Draw Shape tool allows us to draw preset objects that are built into Anime Studio. There's a star, a rectangle, oval, triangle, and more. So if we take the star, we can draw out a star shape, an oval, a rectangle, and so on. You also can do auto fill and auto stroke. So if those are selected, that will take your style palette properties and apply them automatically so you don't have to manually do that yourself. So that can be really useful and save you some time. Additionally, if you hold in shift while creating these shapes, you can create proportionate shapes. So a perfect circle or a perfect square. So keep those shortcuts in mind when drawing objects out. The delete edge tool allows us to delete a line that we may not want anymore. You just click between two points and it will remove that line. This can be useful then if you want to draw in something else or make a correction. So we can take the add point tool, create some more points, then fill in the object by connecting the points together. So you can do this anywhere. Let's say we want to make the nose bigger. Just remove that edge, take the add point tool, and then make your corrections. The Blob Brush tool, which is new in Anime Studio 10, allows us to easily create shapes and add to them anytime you want. If you hold an alt, you can adjust the size of the brush by going left and right, and you can do it at the top numerically as well. But if we start drawing here, you can see we're just kind of drawing an object like so. And if we go in and just decide to paint this all in, like so, go in like that, make sure all the gaps are there, and release, you can see it creates an outline and a fill essentially creating a new shape for us very easily. What's cool now is we can continue to add to this. So we can come in here and color this in, release, and it creates a peak. Again, very easily, we don't have to mess with any of the points. We can add basically whenever we want, however we want. And of course, you can see this has some really interesting results, especially when it comes to creating gaps and such within our objects. Now, another thing is if you hold down control while you are doing this, it will also act as an eraser tool. So if there's a part of an object you don't want, hold in control or command on a Mac and draw like you would and release. And you can see now you can punch holes in your objects. And this can be very useful if you want to, again, create different types of objects that have different types of effects especially if you want to create gaps. Sometimes when drawing in Anime Studio, we may have too many points, and that's where the point reduction tool comes in, new in Anime Studio 10. 
If you hold an alt and go left and right, you can adjust the size of the brush radius. Same at the top. Now the tolerance angle allows us to control how many points will be reduced when we use this tool. The lower the number, the less points will be taken out. Now to use this, you simply paint over the points that you want to remove. Once you release, you can see we have less points. Now again, you can adjust this. So if we go with a lower number and go over those points again, you can see now that less points will be removed, retaining the shape a little bit more. Now if we have a higher tolerance and we come over here and we paint over these points, you're going to see now that the shape does get altered because it's removing so many points that it can't keep the same exact shape. Even though the point reduction tool tries really hard to keep the shape, you'll sometimes have to play with the tolerance angle to get the best results. The eraser tool allows us to erase parts of an object and punch holes in them. Now first, you will need to use your select shape tool in order to use the eraser. So click that, select your shape, and you can now access the eraser. Now this works just like it would with the blob shape tool. You can adjust your radius with alt, and you can do it at the top as well, or use pen pressure. With the blob tool, you could use control to erase when you were drawing out, but now you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just use the eraser tool as is without having to hold down any key and just concentrate on punching holes in your objects or erasing. As you can see, as we erase, Anime Studio creates a brand new shape with what we're doing here with all these points. So it can be very useful for creating new shapes. The scatter brush allows us to create multiple copies of an object. If we select the scatter brush and we go up to the top bar, you can see we have some options. So let's choose leaves for this example. If we click and hold down and just move around, you can see that we can draw out a series of leaves. Now we can adjust the minimum and maximum width so that you can get some variation there. Your scatter brush options at the top will also allow you to change the colors, the rotations, and so forth. So you can really add variation to this if you wish. Now let's say you want to create a custom scatter brush object. Well, you can draw out a shape here. It can be anything you want. And we can copy it with Control C or Command C. Make sure it's selected when you do this. Or you could go up to Edit and Copy. And then go to your scatter brush, go to the drop down menu, and choose Use Clipboard. Now, whatever you copied will be used as the scatter brush. So you could create snow, you could create rain. There's many things you could create with this brush. So be sure to take advantage of it.